Natural hydrogen gets the spotlight in France. I'll go over the findings and give my thoughts on today's hydrogen podcast. So the big questions in the energy industry today are, how is hydrogen the primary driving force behind the evolution of energy? Where is capital being deployed for hydrogen projects globally? And where are the best investment opportunities for early adopters who recognize the importance of hydrogen? I will address the critical issues and give you the information you need to deploy capital. Those are the questions that will unlock the potential of hydrogen, and this podcast will give you the answers. My name is Paul Rodden, and welcome to the Hydrogen Podcast. In an article in CNN on October 29th, Laura Pattison writes, they went hunting for fossil fuels. What they found could help save the world. Laura writes, when two scientists went looking for hydrocarbons beneath the ground of northeastern France, they did not expect to discover something which could supercharge the effort to tackle the climate crisis. Jacques Peronin and Philippe de Donato, both directors of research at France's National Center of Scientific Research, were assessing the amount of methane in the subsoils of the Lorraine mining basin using a world-first specialized probe able to analyze gases dissolved in the water of rock formations deep underground. A couple of hundred meters down, the probe found low concentrations of hydrogen. According to Baronin, this was not a real surprise for us. It's common to find small amounts near the surface of a borehole. But as the probe went deeper, the concentration picked up. At 1,100 meters down, it was 14%. At 1,250 meters down, it was 20%. This was surprising. According to Peronin, it indicated the presence of a large reservoir of hydrogen beneath. They ran calculations and estimated the deposit could contain between 6 million and 250 million metric tons of hydrogen. That could make it one of the largest deposits of quote-unquote white hydrogen ever discovered. The find has helped fuel an already feverish interest in the gas. White hydrogen, also referred to as natural gold or geologic hydrogen, is naturally produced or present in the Earth's crust and has become something of a climate holy grail. Hydrogen produces only water when burned, making it very attractive as a potential clean energy source for industries like aviation, shipping, and steelmaking that need so much energy it's almost impossible to meet through renewables such as solar and wind. But while hydrogen is the most abundant element in the universe, it generally exists combined with other molecules. Currently, commercial hydrogen is produced in an energy-intensive process almost entirely powered by hydrocarbons. A rainbow of colors is used as a shorthand for the different types of hydrogen. Gray is made from methane gas and brown from coal. Blue hydrogen is the same as gray, but the planet heating pollution produced is captured before it goes into the atmosphere. The most promising from a climate perspective is a green hydrogen made using renewable energy to split water, yet production remains small scale and expensive. That's why interest in white hydrogen, a potentially abundant, untapped source of clean burning energy, has ratcheted up over the last few years. In a quote from Jeffrey Ellis, a geochemist with the U.S. Geological Survey, if you had asked me four years ago what I thought about natural hydrogen, I would have told you, oh, it doesn't exist. He says, hydrogen's out there, we know it's around. But scientists thought big accumulations weren't possible. Then he found out about Molly. Arguably, the catalyst for the current interest in white hydrogen can be traced to this West African country. In 1987, in the village of Barokibogu, a driller was left with burns after a water well unexpectedly exploded as he leaned over the edge while smoking a cigarette. The well was swiftly plugged and abandoned until 2011, when it was unplugged by an oil and gas company and reportedly found to be producing a gas that was 98% hydrogen. The hydrogen was used to power the village, and more than a decade later, it is still producing. When a study came out about the well in 2018, it caught the attention of the science community, including Ellis. His initial reaction was that there had been something wrong with the research, because, quote, we just know this can't happen. Then the pandemic hit, and he had time on his hands to start digging. The more he read, the more he realized, quote, we just haven't been looking for it. We haven't been looking in the right places. 
The recent discoveries are exciting for Ellis, who has been working as a petroleum geochemist since the 1980s. He witnessed the rapid growth of the shale gas industry in the U.S., which revolutionized the energy market. Now, he said, here we are in what I think is probably a second revolution. White hydrogen is very promising, agreed Isabel Moretti, a scientific researcher at the University of Powhat Day, Pays de la Dor, in the University of Sorbonne, and a white hydrogen expert. And in a quote from Isabel to CNN, now the question is no longer about the resource, but where to find large economic reserves. Dozens of processes generate white hydrogen, but there is still some uncertainty about how large natural deposits form. Geologists have tended to focus on serpentinization, where water reacts with iron-rich rocks to produce hydrogen, and radiolysis, a radiation-driven breakdown of water molecules. White hydrogen deposits have been found throughout the world, including in the U.S., Eastern Europe, Russia, Australia, Oman, as well as France and Mali. Some have been discovered by accident, others by hunting for clues like features in the landscapes, sometimes referred to as fairy circles, shallow elliptical depressions that can leak hydrogen. Ellis estimates globally there could be tens of billions of tons of white hydrogen. This would be vastly more than 100 million tons a year of hydrogen that is currently produced and the 500 million tons predicted to be produced annually by 2050. Ellis also said most of this is almost certainly going to be in very small accumulations or very far offshore or just too deep to actually be economic to produce. But if just 1% can be found and produced, it would provide 500 million tons of hydrogen for 200 years, he also said. It's a tantalizing prospect for a slew of startups. Australia-based Gold Hydrogen is currently drilling in the York Peninsula in South Australia. It's targeted that spot after scoring the state's archives and discovering that back in the 1920s, a number of boreholes had been drilled at that location which had very high concentrations of hydrogen. The prospectors only interested in hydrocarbons abandoned them. In a quote from Neil McDonald, managing director at Gold Hydrogen, we're very excited by what we're seeing. There's more testing and drilling to do, but the company could get into early production possibly in late 2024, again he told CNN. Some startups are seeing eye-popping investments. Coloma, a Denver-based white hydrogen startup, has secured $91 million from investors, including the Bill Gates-founded investment firm Breakthrough Energy Ventures. Although the company remains tight-lipped about exactly where in the U.S. it's drilling and when it's aiming for commercialization. Another Denver-based company, Natural Hydrogen Energy, founded by geochemist Vacheslav Zaganik, has completed an exploratory hydrogen borehole in Nebraska in 2019 and has plans for new wells. The world is, quote, according to Zaganik, very close to the first commercial projects. He also says natural hydrogen is a solution which will allow us to get it to speed. The challenge for these businesses and for scientists will be translating hypothetical promise into commercial reality. Again, according to Ellis, there could be a period of decades where there's a lot of trial and error and false starts. If it's going to take us 200 years to develop the resource, that's not really going to be much use. But many of the startups are bullish. Some predict years, not decades, to commercialization. According to Zagonic, we have all the necessary technology we need, with some slight modifications. Challenges remain. In some countries, regulations are an obstacle. Costs also need to be worked out. According to calculations based on the Molly Well, white hydrogen could cost around a dollar a kilogram to produce, compared to around six dollars a kilogram for green hydrogen. But white hydrogen could quickly become more expensive if large deposits require deeper drilling. Back in the Lorraine Basin, Peronin and De Donato's next steps are to drill down to 3,000 meters to get a clearer idea of exactly how much white hydrogen there is. There's a long way to go, but it would be ironic if this region, once one of Western Europe's key coal producers, became an epicenter of new white hydrogen industry. Okay, so more exciting news on natural hydrogen. Now, this opportunity is one that I've discussed on the show several times, and this new development in France has serious potential. Now, I would say to take their estimations of 6 to 250 million metric tons of hydrogen with a grain of salt. While it's possible these volumes are there, it's still much too early to know where in the volume spectrum these amounts rest. But even still, 
I very much like the natural hydrogen opportunity. I've spoken several times regarding how legacy oil and gas can leverage their vast amounts of knowledge to push the hydrogen economy forward. This is another prospect for that knowledge base. Yes, modifications and adjustments need to be made to drill for hydrogen. And 3,000 meters, what Peronin is looking for, is a very deep well, but not an impossible depth. In the U.S. alone, there are nearly 43,000 wells greater than 10,000 feet TVD. Not to mention the subsurface technology that needs to be leveraged to analyze natural hydrogen potential. And this is something that I know a handful of reservoir engineering firms are looking into. Now, I don't believe this is something that the super majors will be looking into anytime soon. But if mid and maybe even large cap ENPs take a look and actually develop an area with good returns, I do believe we will see super majors paying attention, possibly looking into acquisitions of these assets. All right, that's it for me, everyone. If you have a second, I would really appreciate it if you could leave a good review on whatever platform it is that you listen to. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, YouTube, whatever it is. That would be a tremendous help to the show. And as always, if you ever have any feedback, you're welcome to email me directly at info at the So until next time, keep your eyes up and honor one another. Hey, this is Paul. I hope you liked this podcast. If you did and want to hear more, I'd appreciate it if you would either subscribe to this channel on YouTube or connect with your favorite platform through my website at www dot the hydrogen podcast dot com. Thanks for listening. I very much appreciate it. Have a great day.